Hey everybody, we're back again today with a, uh, another video in our series of classic album song rankings. Sam St. John is here. We've been doing this series for about a month now and we're taking uh, classic albums, ranking the songs on them with different members of the BC, revolving members, uh, giving everybody a shot at their expertise. Today we've got Randall Nelson with us. Randy, Hello. glad to have you here. And one of his, uh, not one of his, his favorite artists, Van Morrison, Moondance, 1970. Great album. There it is. Let's all fire that baby up here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're all fans. And uh, like I said, this, this is a true classic album. It's, it's Van's third album uh, following his incredible uh, Astral Weeks, which came out two years before. Uh, different vibe on this. This is more accessible. Uh, Astral Weeks was more of a jazz, freeform, folky kind of continuous masterpiece, really, if you come right down to it. This is more accessible. Like I said, it, it hits R&B, it hits jazz, it hits pop, soul, folk, very melodic, very romantic, life-affirming, emotional at times. It's, it's really a, a tremendous album. All 10 songs are outstanding, in my opinion, and it's very difficult to... Uh, to rank these in any kind of order, but that's what we're doing. That's the challenge of this video series. And that's what we're going to do guys. Great to have you. Uh, what are your thoughts? Let's go with Randy first on this particular album. Well, like I, I started my Van Morrison journey, actually. I mean, I need some of the songs like Domino and Brown Eyed Girl and Moon Dance, but I bought the Rolling Stone record guide and I started buying five star albums in there and I bought Astro Weeks first, which it's become my favorite album of all time. But then the next one I bought of bands was Moon Dance, which was totally different, but I loved it as well. I mean, it's more pop and R&B based, but I don't think there's a, a weak song on the album. And it's just, it's became an amazing album to me. How about you, Sam? Yeah, this is one of the first uh, full length well, I guess in like the, the archives of Van. So for me, in terms of my Van Morrison um, venture, the first true Van Morrison album I actually bought was Keep Me Singing, which I think was 2013-ish, 2014. Um, one of his newer albums, obviously, and because I love the singles that were released off of it. And then I started buying all of his new albums from that point on. Um, and then I, of course, started going back. And I think, like Randy... Uh, Astro Weeks and Moon Dance were the first two that I bought. I think in reverse order than Randy. I think I got Moon Dance and then Astro Weeks. But like Randy said, this one's very accessible. Uh, of course, I mean I knew I knew Moon Dance, Crazy Love, and Into the Mystic. I mean those are on all the greatest hits compilations that he does. But then you know if this album has deeper cuts, I listened to some of the deeper cuts once I listened to this album all the way through. And I was like, man, that's a pretty perfect album. <laughs> and um, my mom's a big Van Morrison fan and she always had this album. However, I think the the CD itself was missing. So we always had the case, but we didn't have the CD. Uh, I think she, she loaned it to her brother or something like that. And he never gave it back. But um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's in the upper echelon of Van Morrison albums for me. Definitely, definitely top five, maybe top three. Yeah. I agree. All right. So what we do here is we're going to rank them in reverse order. Uh, we're going to go in the order of Randy, Sam, and myself. And at the end, we'll give the album an overall score, uh, one to 10. So Randy, kick it off with uh, your number 10. I don't know if this is going to surprise anybody or not, but my number 10 was actually the only single that was released on the album uh, at the time it was you know, at the time it came out. I think Moon Dance got released later as a single, like in '77 or something like that. Yeah, but it was "Come Running," uh, kind of his happy-go-lucky song. The song only made it to number 39, and actually the B-side probably become more famous in "Crazy Love." But uh, I think the highlight of this one is Jeff Labus on piano. It's kind of a star. It just kind of mm -hmm. goes around the whole song uh, with him on the piano. And it's kind of funky and bluesy. But the thing that really amazes me is Van just rushes through the lyrics. I mean, he's slinging them right and left. It's, they're going so fast. And then that, there's like a train reference in there. And so I'm not sure if come running if the person's coming on the train or they on the other side of the track and the train's leaving. But uh, 
it's it's a pretty amazing song and I like it. It's kind of a sing along song, but uh, yeah. for me it was number ten. Okay, Sam. Number ten for me is from the uh, same side of the album, and it's the song "Brand New Day." Um, uh, it's one of the. I mean, there are there are a couple of ballads on here. I mean, obviously, "Crazy Love" into the Mystic, but um, this is probably the 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 this is the deep cut ballad on the album I, I would say and um just um it's, it's got like the female vocalist in the back where he's like you know it seems like seems like feels like feels like a brand new day and he, he his voice is killer in it um but in terms of you know the ballads it's my least favorite on the album and again it's it's a pretty daggone good song but um it's just not not the strongest one on here for me i mean it's 10 tracks, and once I got down to about number six, it, it was real difficult. So, Yeah, my number 10 is actually the closing song, Glad Tidings. Wow. What, a lot of people really love this song. Uh, I like it, but I don't think it's a standout on the album. I'm just being honest. It's got that R&B jazz fusion on it. It's joyous. It's uplifting. It moves, guided by the horns. It's a good way to close the album with glad tidings, like happy trails or whatever. <laughs> Take care. Uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of rejoicing in a way. It's upbeat, but I like those other nine songs better. And uh, I had forgotten when I was doing the homework or research. It's uh, in a Sopranos famous episode where Steve Buscemi gets whacked. Uh, glad tidings, I believe, is either the name of that or they use this song in it. So my number 10. Oh, my number nine is uh, Sam's number 10. That's Brand New Day. Uh, it's a beautiful piano ballad. Van's kind of got that R&B croon that, where he raises his voice on the chorus and at the end. But, uh, and he mentioned the backing vocals, but it's Sissy Houston, Judy Clay, and Jackie Verdell. Of course, Sissy Houston was uh, Whitney's mother, but she also sang a lot with Elvis, which was it's pretty good, but I kind of like the call and response at the end that the song to me is kind of about redemption and yeah. brand new day. And I like, because I was lost and double crossed with my hands tied behind my back. I was long time hurt and thrown in the dirt, shoved out on the railroad track. I've been used, abused, and so confused. And I did, didn't know where to run, but I stood and looked and my eyes got hooked on that beautiful morning sun. Well, it talks about being double crossed and it's kind of a, a theme. It goes with band and a lot of things. A lot of people think that it's just with the, you know, the recent uh, COVID restrictions and stuff, but band's always been singing about, you know, authority figures and music executives and, you know, doing him wrong. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, those lyrics that you mentioned are a reason I have it a little bit higher because I really like that the choice of words he uses there number nine sam uh for me it's um another uh b-side song these dreams of you which is um very could have been a, you know a motown song the way that the saxophone is and i think van plays his saxophone and i mean people that are just casual fans of van morrison might not know that he does play saxophone on a lot of his music and he, he plays it live too. Um, and it, it's just, he kind of wails on it with his little solo. And he, he kind of plays a, a sloppy saxophone, kind of similarly to John Coltrane. Not that John Coltrane is sloppy, but it's got, he kind of plays with a shrillness to it, not the smoothness um, like others, like somebody like Kenny G might play their <laughs> saxophone. But um, I, I love the, the Motown sound sound of it you know he's like it's like the, the the response with the horns he's like these dreams of you bah, 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 nah, nah, nah. Love it. so real and so true and then i love the no 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 which is just a classic van morrison um yeah. melody i mean you hear that throughout his whole career and and van morrison's the first to say that he um he plagiarizes his own music and mm -hmm. i think as an artist you're allowed to do that it's your stuff so yep um it, it's, it's a great song but um yeah it's number nine for me. I, I guess unless you're John Fogarty, then you get sued. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's for uh, yourself. 
Or George yeah. Iris and My Sweet Lord. Didn't he get ripped on that one too for the one of the mm -hmm. personal songs or something? He's so fond. Yeah. But not, not for his own music though, like John Fogarty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fogarty got it for his own stuff. Uh, my yeah. number nine is also on uh, the B side here. Everyone. I like the clavinet at the beginning. Uh, and I like the I, 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 that, that, that kind of thing that only Van can do uh, when he's looking for a little space. And he, he vocalizes and creates his own little uh, trans, uh, one of my transitions into the next verse. I mean, it's cool. Uh, there's not as much lyrics in here as I'd like as some of the other songs that I have above it, but I like the song, put it at number nine. It was used in the Royal Tenenbaums movie as well. Another one of these ones. These filmmakers love Van Morrison. They put them in their, <laughs> their movie. Oh, my number eight is These Dreams of You. Uh, kind of got this R&B groove. He said he wrote it uh, he had a dream about Ray Charles getting assassinated. Yeah. And then he's got a, a, a lyric in there. Ray Charles was shot down, but he got up to do his best. A crowd of people gathered around to the question answered yes. And the next verse, he gets slapped in the face. There's a, also a lyric in there about playing cards in the dark and who's playing with she cheats. And so I don't know, when I'm thinking of this song, when he says, these dreams of you so real and so true, I'm thinking that, they seem so real, but maybe it's the inconsistency of dreams because, you know, like the Ray Charles thing didn't happen. And I'm sure I'm, I'm thinking the other things didn't happen too, but they seemed real at the time. But uh, I didn't look, you know, you know who was playing everything, but I know Van was played harmonica on that. I like the harmonica. Yeah, I like the harmonica too. Yeah. There is a cool short sax solo, but I don't know if that, do you think that's Van, Sam? Or? Yeah, I think so. The way that, the way that it sounds is definitely, Van for sure. Good one. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's my number eight. Uh, my number eight is uh, Everyone, which uh, Rich just mentioned. Um, I love the almost the harmony of the, the horns on the background where he's like, everyone. And then you yeah. hear like, it goes like, no, 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 in the background. Um, but again, not, not his deepest lyrics. I mean, the chorus is just him saying everyone and like, pronouncing every syllable everyone every right. but it, it's a sing-along song i sing it quite a bit um just about just that chorus and um yeah not much to say about it it's uh number eight for me my number eight has been mentioned brand new day sort of uh hope for a new beginning uh finding your way through difficult times looking for that ray of hope that silver lining uh the lyrics that Randy mentioned earlier, I was lost, double cross, uh, thrown in the dirt, long time hurt, used, abused, so confused. I like that, all that stuff. Dark clouds roll away, the sun begins to shine, the call and response, fantastic. It is a ballad, it's slower, it breaks up some of the more up-tempo numbers on the album, but I'm going to put it at number eight. So all three of my so far are on side B. It's weird. Yeah, same. All right, number seven. What's the difference between a harpsichord and a clavinet? Mm, harpsichord. That's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. Well, I don't know. When I heard that at the beginning, I was thinking a harpsichord, but I, it's clavinet, you said? I, I looked it up. The, the, the song was uh, Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they say clavinet. It could be a harpsichord, but okay. clavinet seems to be. It's more of like an electric version of a harpsichord, okay. like, like a Hammond versus like a regular organ. It's cool so sounding though. The, the harpsichord is the harpsichord is the acoustic, and the clavinet's more okay. um, more electric. So, yeah. So my number seven is everyone, uh, and I, I like that sound because I loved it. Um, Love is blue, the instrumental uh, by Paul Marriott. But, and I think maybe this moved up on me because of the Royal Tannenbaum scene where at the graveyard and they're coming at, out and just, the whole song seems old timey, but I mean old timey like 15th or 16th or 17th century old timey. Yeah, very you much. Got the, you got the flute and you got the clavinet, it's kind of like the harpsichord. And, very renaissance, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and got these jangling acoustic guitars, kind of some Baroque pop in there. Yep. I like how he goes, 
a couple of times he goes, I, 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 everyone, everyone. That's my favorite. Kind of, it's, it's a pretty happy song for Van to be singing. He doesn't have a lot of real, the whole song's kind of a happy song. Another thing, I love the, like the walk in, like the doom, doom, we shall walk. It just, yeah, it just starts walking in. Yeah. It has a little scatting at the end too. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I like this. That's good. All right, now this. Let's keep in mind here. This is my list. <laughs> um, so number number seven for me, and this is solely based on the album. Okay, that's why number seven for me is Caravan. However, mm -hmm. if Caravan was the same version that was from the last waltz it would be number one without a question however i'm going with the studio recording of caravan um you know great lyrics about you know like a, a band of gypsies and um, how the radio is like a sign of you know getting away from things and um just one of those great songs van's voice is killer i love the the band in it where he's like you know turn it up bow, yeah. bow, that's enough Right. Know, radio and then of course you know the, the the hook is the la la part of the la 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 like that that whole section yep. is great but uh, it, it just seems like he he's the, it's almost like he didn't know how to um for this particular song it's almost like he didn't understand that he could like he could like sing out a little bit more in the studio i mean he's very reserved on this it's almost like he's done it a hundred times and he's like okay let me just get through this when you compare it to what he did with the band in 1976 at the last waltz where he's you know just tearing it up and you know just on fire one of my all-time favorite live performances but based on the studio version it's only uh, number seven for me but like i said if it was the other version it'd be number one in a heartbeat i, th I think it's a pretty solid performance on the album too i think the reason that it was so over the top on the last waltz is because of the amount of drugs that were going on backstage. <laughs> they were all coked <laughs> up and every, he was trying to keep up with all these legends around him. So he just aired it out. And it, you're right. I will say from, from what I from under, understand about the last waltz, Van, I mean, Van was never into drugs much other than like, he got into some alcohol. And I think at this point is when he was coming out of that. Um, and he was, you know, kind of dealing with some stage fright. He didn't perform like full yeah. tours at, at that era. So I think that makes sense. He was trying to up his game, even though he was sober and everybody else around him was, you know, on something. A but, lot of, Neil Young was fried that on that show and some of the others as well. Mm -hmm. All, all oh, the yeah. members. <laughs> yeah, you could see it in Levon. He's just staring. Yeah. Yeah. And Rick Danko, man, he looked like Danko. Bad. He was really. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just as they had that goofy look, like uh, it was like kind of mm -hmm. messed up, but that, that went with the 70s. And yeah, that was just uh, a thought. My number, what are we on? Seven here? Yeah, seven. seven is These Dreams of You, which you guys have really covered with the RB Motown vibe that it gives off. I like the way that Van modulates his voice on this song, too. These Dreams of You, so real and so true, and Hushabai, Hushabai, all that stuff. The harmonic and the bass line solid got the horns the sax solo i heard there were two different saxes an alto sax an alto sax and a tenor sax i'm not sure if ann plays them or not uh i love the song so it's hard to put it at seven because at times it would be in my top five but today it's number seven <laughs> all right number six my six and five i've gone back and forth and I don't know here's where his number six is now and it's crazy love which he sings in that falsetto that he didn't do very often he Lyndon Arden stole the highlights is the other one I really remember him doing which I love that song I like I love this song too but it's, uh, it's a wonderful romantic ballad light percussion it's almost like the song is just floating on air the whole the whole time and Van's voice is just wonderful on it, like I said, with that falsetto. And I like the lyrics. She's got a fine sense of humor when I'm feeling low down. And when I come to her, when the sun goes down, she take away my trouble, she take away my grief, take away my heartache. I go right to sleep. It's just kind of like a lullaby almost, the whole song. And you know, I, at the end, saying, I go right to sleep. I don't what beautiful song, but I'm putting at number six at this moment. It could be higher. So 
some other time. Yeah. yeah. Just a completely different voice. I mean, comparing that voice to like, I mean, to, to his um, uh, and it's me voice, just completely different, or his moon dance voices. It's all different. His yeah. voice is an instrument. All right. Um, number six for me is going to be here we go. The title track, Woo! Moon Dance. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> um, simply because it, I'm tired of it, <laughs> to be <laughs> perfectly honest. Um, but even even then, the other songs that I have are higher, I prefer to the song when I'm just listening to, for pleasure. But um, what one of my favorite memories of the song is the one time that I saw Van um, in 2018. Like the, the it had just gotten dark outside and he started playing the song and you know there was a moon out you couldn't see the moon could I mean it, it was like a it was an amphitheater but it was covered but you knew like the moon was out there like the, so there was some like moon glow over the you know over the grass along over the lawn and so that was kind of neat to hear him do that outdoors um, yeah. and do that song and it's a fantastic jazzy song it's one of those that I'm always struggling to try to learn to play on the guitar because. Um, just that that walk the music in itself is is wonderful it sounds like it, it's jazz from like the 50s maybe like just instrumental is just beautiful and i love how at the end he kind of does like his um it's a scat but it's almost like he's trying to be like a brass instrument where he's like no 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 like yeah. kind of like, like like through his teeth um and who knows you know i'm sure it sounded different every time he did it because he's just the king of improv and um you know, putting lyrics down on the spot and directing the band in the studio. So it's a great song. It's a huge, huge song. It's still all over classic radio. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's fantastic. I mean, it, it deserves to be played as much as it is. Yeah. My number six is Crazy Love. Randy just talked about it. Sort of a gentle voice on this compared to some of the other stuff, I think. You know, I just, I love... The, the lyrically, it's fantastic. Great performance. I wrote down the same lyrics that Randy talked about. Take away my trouble. Take away my grief. Love that line. Uh, beautiful romantic ballad. Soulful. Great performance. Short, though. It's kind of comes and goes before you know it. But I love the song. Number six. Well, my number five, I guess, is higher than riches and that's glad tidings sorry <laughs> all right but it's to me it was kind of a like getting together again with like for the holidays because it talks yeah. about Christmas in there yeah. and to let bygones be guy bygones just to come on and of course when they use it in the sopranos episode it was like here's glad tidings from new york <laughs> it's rubbed out that's uh yeah i love i love the the, the walking bass line and with like the horn section and that uh seems like van's always got great bass and all his always songs. always that's uh and then the, i love the lyrics and we'll send glad tidings from new york open up your eyes so you may see ask you not to read between the lines hope that you will come in right on time so it's like don't read anything into it let's just get together and have fun at the holidays and not but i don't know i've always like always liked the song Cool. That's my number five. All right. For me, uh, number five is going to be Come Running, which um, I think y'all mentioned a little bit earlier. And from what I understand, this one actually dates back to the Astral Weeks era. Like there was a there was a demo, at least like a one take demo put down during the Astral Weeks sessions, um, which Randy mentioned earlier, the uh, train imagery, which connects to like the theme with like Madame George from Van Morrison's Astral Weeks. So he obviously still had that theme in his mind and it, you can kind of hear it once you know it, I mean, it kind of fits with, you know, some of like the, the lighter stuff on Astral Weeks. There's not much, but there's, you know, a little bit of it, but um, I, I love the, the whole you know, musical vibe of it. I love the, the imagery and, yeah. um, Again, I love the the Motown, you know, hey, come run into me. And then the background, oh, come run into me. And hey. I love how it, yeah, they, <laughs> I love how it ends, right? It, it, it kind of slows down. It's like, yeah. And then it just, it just closes, you know, the band. You can just see them like hitting the drums and um, 
it'd be that'd be a great one to, to hear live for sure. I mean he wouldn't do it the same as he did then but um it made it all the way to number five for me I, I love it I think it's really upbeat and um shows that Van can write a good pop song on top of all the jazz and blues that he does yeah it's my number five also uh very joyous uplifting happy-go-lucky all those adjectives the piano's cool the horns are great I, I just love that hey come running to me whoa come running to me. <laughs> It, it's it never dies down it's always you know very spiritual in a way too it's a sing-along it's catchy it makes you happy hearing it and singing it yeah. running to me i mean it's fantastic so it made my top five all right well my number four is a song that uh sam said he got a little tired of and that's moon dance and maybe that's because that's the most played song man's done in concert so i think he does that yeah. every single one and it also i guess was about the most takes in the studio so the band members probably got a little tired of it too because i i guess he was really working on it to get it perfect and he said it was his most sophisticated song that he thought that somebody like frank sinatra might be able to sing this song so it became more of a standard i think uh, yeah and maybe the most jazzy song on the album too and i love oh, no. I was gonna say I know I, I forgot to mention for that too. I mean, people have covered it. Like uh, I think Michael Bublé's covered it. Herb Alpert covered it. So it, those jazz folks do like it. So yeah. And then I like, I like the you know how it starts out that walking bass line that he's done in quite a few of these songs. I was looking up John Klingberg, which I didn't really know, and I couldn't find out much information about him although he played a great bass that other than he died young and he played on his band and street choir too. Mm, okay. but, but, uh, and then I love how at the end he does kind of a trill with a flute mm -hmm. um, at the end of the song. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. It's very autumnal. Kind of, kind of jazz swing. But I, mm -hmm. I like it. That's my number four. Yeah. Even though it's played a lot. It is. Um, Number four for me is another one of the big hits that I knew before this album, and that's Crazy Love. Um, I think y'all both mentioned it already, but neither of y'all have mentioned, and it's interesting to me. Again, I mentioned earlier Van plagiarizing himself um, and his music. This is the same melody as two other Van Morrison songs, Tupelo Honey and Why Must I Always Explain from Hymns to the Silence. And um, he often incorporates those songs together emerges them together in concert with this song and it's i think it's one of those things especially given um to reference tupelo honey i think bob dylan said that tupelo honey was one of those songs that was always there van just pulled it from the air and that's why the melody keeps coming back to him and i mean this album was what 1970 1970 70 yeah and um then you know, Tupelo Honey came just a few years later, and then Why Must I Always Explain? He jumps ahead to 1991. So that's it, it, great. I love his voice on it. Again, it's been covered by a ton of people. Um, again, Michael Bublé is another one. It actually was a hit for him as well. Actually, it's still played on the radio. So Van's got this rolling, a couple different artists playing it. So he's rolling in the dough <laughs> from other people doing his stuff, oh, yeah. which is what you want. But um, it's a it's a beautiful song. I love his falsetto in it. It's very sparse and um yeah number four my number four is the opening track and it stoned me nobody's mentioned that so far so uh great storytelling here with uh kind of the youth innocence going fishing spending the day on the outdoors and on a summer day and the rain's in your face and uh stone me just like jelly roll which is a reference to jelly roll morton a jazz musician uh, Van knows all the jazz musicians, believe me. He, he he talks about them a lot in his different songs throughout the years. But this is a great a great song, and it kicks off the album really well. And I like the change of pace after that. Not another song really sounds like this. I mean, it, the beginning does, and then he just takes off. So, and it stoned me a classic. So it's number four. Oh. My number three. Well, I wanted to say one thing I forgot to say about Moon Dance. Yeah, is I love the a fantabulous night to make romance because I actually learned a word because I didn't think that was a real word and then I looked I looked <laughs> it up and I go yeah 
Fantagulous is a word. It's like excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> My number three is Caravan. Uh, like I said, it's not as good as the version he does in, on the last waltz. But I guess he was living in a, uh, a house in Woodstock, New York. And he said the, there was a house that was a long ways away, but he could, he could hear the radio like it was in his house. And so it was like, he said it was just kind of a spiritual thing. And that uh, that's why you got to turn it up, turn it up. like like. This guy, you know, a mile away, he's going to turn up his radio so the man can hear it. But uh, he's a real soulful voice on this, oh. playful piano, uh, got the pulsing horns. And he kind of intermingles the song with sitting around a gypsy campfire with the radio. So I don't know the connection exactly in that. I think Sam said, what did you say, Sam? That, it's like a sense of uh, of freedom. I mean, you have the gypsies, right, yeah. and then you have like the radio. Like you can go off to your own world, the same to music. Right. Yeah, but yeah. But I love like the, the saxophone following Van's words on the chorus, uh, and then he slows down with the acoustic guitars prominent, and then you can hear him go turn it up, and then the horns go and turn it up, turn up your radio. And, uh, I think it's a great song and great it's more of a, a r&b feel than some of the other ones on here oh yeah yep but the walt last waltz is the best version <laughs> indeed agreed i think we all agree on that yeah. <laughs> um number three for me uh into the mystic which i know a lot of people put as their favorite van morrison songs um different different lists that i've heard i think maybe even like in rolling stone like listing Van Morrison songs it's one of the top but um I'd say at one point it was probably my favorite Van Morrison song when I was just basing it off of the hits that I knew but then after getting into his deep catalog and collecting all of his music um it's dropped just because there are like other songs that I'm like wow that's a great song and I'm not as familiar with it so it drops the familiar kind of back but um apparently what I learned about this song was that uh surgeons like to listen to it when they're performing surgery because it's so even keeled and um I, I didn't know that but it's been covered by a million people um everybody from uh the wallflowers um the jacob dylan paul carrick um the, the the dead like different offshoots of the grateful dead have played at jason isbell the allman brothers joe cocker um it's it's just it's been played by everyone and um again it's often but it is my favorites but I want to say it's not one that plays live too much. I think he just played it live the other day for the first time in like 12 years. So it's not one that he goes back to a whole lot. But um, I love how he says, you know, I love the whole, you know, and the foghorn blows. I love the um, the guitar, the pneu, pneu, pneu. It just kind of goes kind of taking its time behind him. And then, of course, the big, you know, I want to hear it. I don't have to feel it. And he's like, gets that huge note, which I'm not even going to attempt to do. But um yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a pretty perfect song. I mean, any any other day it could be my number one on this album. I mean, the top three are tough. My number three is Caravan. Uh, again, R and B ish shows off his skills as a vocalist. I think really well, even though he outdid himself on the last waltz with the leg kicks and all. But uh, <laughs> this is a really solid performance here. And then you guys talk about it concentrates on the gypsy life and the love of radio, turn that up, turn up the radio, turn it up, that's enough. We can find out what's really going on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then he starts jazzing it up just to know you got soul radio, radio, all that, you know, turn up. And he, on the uh, the live version, he, he even takes up another notch. I mean, he starts. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think he says radio instead of radio. I mean, you yeah, turn up your radio. Right? Yeah. I mean, he just. <laughs> and you worry that he's going to rip his uh, his pants because there's tight white pants that he's, he's wearing. Tight pants. <laughs> he's strutting. He's kicking. He's. Oh, yeah. He's got the, then, the, the microphone then, like led around. And, and the other guys are like in awe going, Where, where's he going with this? They're just. Then he says, thank you. And just drops the mic yeah, and, and, keeps, and leaves. Robbie Robertson's like, oh, what was that? You know, was, Let, let's wrap yeah. this up. Yeah. <laughs> It was, yeah, I, yeah, killer. Just killer. that aside, I mean, Caravan's a great song, and it really, uh, there's a lot of turns in it, too. I mean, it, it's not just one level. It's, 
I, I love everything about it. So it, it's pretty high on my list at number three. All right. Think? My number two is and it stoned me, the opening track on there. Got a cool, nostalgic feel, kind of song about his youth, about he and his buddy are going fishing, like you said, and it talks about their adventures, and, you know, they, it's, it was raining, they hope it don't rain all day, they get picked up by a pickup truck, and then they go swimming, yeah. and then when they're walking home, their mouths are dry, and they meet a man that's got a jar, I don't know if it's, uh, moonshine or it's water <laughs> but, but it tells about water washing over me so it might just be water that they're drinking and this is an interesting song in that i got in kind of an argument with somebody on you know in the comment section on youtube i think it was somebody uh was talking about this song and uh stone me just like jelly roll and they're wanting to use you know kind of the blues term about an anatomy part but you know what I'm, i don't know if you know what i'm talking about jelly roll can also mean yeah but, but so i go that doesn't fit in with the song at all no you know it's about kids and his youth and it's about and he said before that his dad used to play jelly roll morton all the time and he got to know you know that artist mm -hmm. so you know I, so i finally gave up and i wasn't going to win with this guy <laughs> and he, he mentions uh in like a ton of other songs he mentions jelly roll like throughout his career, he, he that's one of those references he brings back over and over again. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, anyway, great sax solo, but just the nostalgic feel. He said it was more uh, stone me with nature. Yeah, I believe that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, this is probably the big shock uh, for me. Number two is Glad Tidings. Uh, I love that song. I think it's. I love the the opening bass. The do 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 do. Do, 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 and then the drum comes in um and then i just love how the you know believe you arise no 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 I, I love the whole the music in it and i love the um the harmony with the la 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 but i think i re i reacquainted with myself with the song when van turned uh 75 i think in 2020 um a bunch of artists i think 75 different artists put up youtube videos like like they were playing remotely of van morrison songs and there's this young group named the academic and i mean they were like early 20s like 20 21 years old just kids you know and um they did a cover of glad tidings and they sing it pretty much straight and you know they're all doing it from like their different apartments and everything like everybody did during covid and i'm like that's really a good song and so I would you know, go back and listen to this album and I would play that song constantly. And so really this song became number two during COVID. I mean, before that I knew it and liked it, but during COVID, I really listened to it a lot and it kept bumping its way up. But, um, and as, as a side note, this was the actual, um, this was the last song recorded. So it's kind of fitting that it's the, um, you know, final track on the record. So it's number two, um, uh, the B side finally makes its way, you know, further down the list for me so very good my number two is the title track moon dance you know the jazzier tune on the album it's soft rock acoustic i, I love the fantabulous line that randy brought up fantabulous night to make romance neat the color cover of october sky very uh, autumnal i mean, uh, you can picture a big orange moon up there while he's uh, singing this song and uh, special props to the bass uh, John Klingberg. I don't know anything about him either, but all throughout this album, the bass really is the instrument that works the most for me. It's very prominent on a lot of these songs and uh, it just brings out the greatness of the song. So, what can I say? Number two. All right, my number one. Of course, you may know that my favorite album of all time is Astro Weeks. And so my number one is the song that seems like it would fit on Astro Weeks, and that's Into the Mystic, which he's kind of got the ethereal quality. Uh, it starts out with the guitar, and it kind of fades into the piano and bass. It's really cool. And like, I don't know if you said guitar. I thought when they were when the, and when the foghorn blows, it would just kind of go on across the bass or something like the bass. And, I don't know to make that sound when the foghorn blows, but I don't, I don't know. But uh, 
And I like how he's he's uh, so calm through the song until he gets, I want to rock your gypsy yeah. soul, just like in the days of old. Then he really tears into it. And, uh, and magnificently, we will fold into the mystic, which some of the song sounds like, you know, it's a sailor out at sea and he's going to come back uh, to, the, to, to his woman. But then, then he has these other lyrics. He kind of does the stream of consciousness thing on the lyrics like he did on Astro Weeks on the song too. But, uh, and for Van, it seems like a lot of times the mood was more important. And he just liked different lyrical phrases that he would use. But yeah. that the mood was the important thing. Uh, and I, like at the end where he just goes, it's too late to stop now, which I guess he uses in concert. And that's what his mm -hmm. uh, live album was called, called that. But Jeff Labus on piano and John Plantania on guitar was, was really great on this one. But, uh, and I love the beginning. We were born before the wind, also younger than the sun. Yeah. Uh, that's my number one. My second favorite Van Morrison after Madam George. Hmm. Wow. Well, uh, I think Rich and I are going to agree on our number one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, we're not. And it's, oh, we're not? Well, forget that. <laughs> uh, my number one is Obla Dio. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, my number one is And It's Thrown Me. Um, again, killer. Ki it's just, it's such a great track. I mean, we've already talked about it. Um, yeah, and you, you are right. I do remember you talking about it, Rich. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, 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 it did have like the um, you know, autobiographical yeah. st storyline to it about a trip he took at age 12. And um, my understanding is that it was water, you know, that they were drinking and yeah. that it was just one of those moments where, you know, it's you know, everything like you realize like why you're outdoors, why you're, you know, hanging out with your friends, fishing as young kids, you don't have a worry, you can just hitchhike and um, especially back then, they didn't have to worry about it in the you know 1950s when he was a kid, um, hitchhiking somebody in your neighborhood is no big deal. I mean, right. Um, and you know, I, it just paints that picture of like springtime with the stream and the the paint on the fence and the um, jumping into the to the like the the pool and the creek and yeah. um, just just a great song. Um, it's, a, it's it's actually an interesting opener because it doesn't really it just kind of just starts right into it with that doing half a mile and right. it's just um, and as a side note, there's a really good uh, really good live version uh, on YouTube that john mayer does it's just from a um a, a, a cell phone but he just does it one day because he likes to pull in covers of just random artists when he can and he does a great version of it but um one of those one of those classic band songs that you know it, it, it's hard to hard to put it too low on this list so it's number one yeah i had a at number four I, it always reminded me of like a huckleberry finn tom sawyer with the yeah. holes on their back going down to the fishing hole and barefoot and, but there's no pants rolled up yeah yeah and then you know the, the water metaphor you know whether it be the drink of water the rain coming down or the fishing and the, the swimming you know it all comes together in that song and mm -hmm. it, it is it, in a sense of childhood too uh my number one is into the mystic it's my favorite van morrison song on any album so it had to be number one here i find it in addition to the uh the, the sailing and the uh, the foghorn and all that stuff. Very spiritual song, very peaceful. Sort of touches your soul in a way. A uh, song of contentment. Uh, you know, even if you're dealing with grief, you know that someone's going to a better place. They're going into the mystic, sailing off, waiting for that foghorn to bring them home, if you believe in that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a magical, magical song for me. And I'm not a deeply religious person, but this, like I said in the previous videos, when I want something spiritually, I'll listen to a great song like this, and it just takes me to a different place, puts me in a better mood. Uh, I think it's a special song, and this is, like I said it before, this is a song that I would want played at my own funeral. I, I think it's fantastic, so I'm going to put it at number one. I, I never get tired of hearing it either. Yeah. Never. No, I don't either. Yeah. I do, I do for other bands. I mean, I do for like Brown Eyed Girl and even to an extent, um, Moon Dance. But um, yeah, I don't, 
most of the song, other than Moon Dance, really the rest of these I don't really get tired of. Even Crazy Love, which is on the radio all the time around here. Yeah, um, I think Moon Dance would be the song that I hear the most of Van Morrison. That and Brown Eyed Girl, like you mentioned. Brown Eyed Girl, yeah. I, I but, still really don't get tired of them. I don't know why. They they transport me back to when I first heard them, the nostalgic feel of it. I like that kind of stuff, but yeah, I'm an old but, soul, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> and some of them are soothing. Like Into the Mystic is a soothing song, even though it, it soars. At, at, you know, he's lulling you, and then all of a sudden bang he takes it to a different level all within the same song yeah fantastic well that was cool uh before we get out of here we always like to score this album uh one being horrific 10 being a masterpiece five being dead solid average randy where are you putting it well there's probably going to be three or four van morrison albums i would give a 10 and i would give this one a 10 because i think it's there's not a weak song on the album i can listen to any of those songs at any time and be happy to hear them and it's just like i said this was different than esther weeks which is my favorite but it's it's more accessible to i think to the to the mass public but yeah. uh, i still like it even though it's more accessible and it's it, it's a 10 to me sam yeah and i've mentioned in our other three or four videos that we've done um, that other than my top two or three favorite albums, I'm, I'm not going to give another album a 10, <laughs> but for this one, um, I'm going to give it a 9.5. Just, I mean, it, it's pretty daggone perfect. Um, I mean, other, maybe, maybe my number 10 on this list, like might be not, I'm not going to miss that, but like just one that kind of gets buried to me. Um, really the only reason I can do that but I mean in, in a in a other world I would give this a 10 but for this purpose I'm going to give it a 9.5 yeah I, I have to give it a 10 because I like every song I think every song is excellent although I never met anybody that was a tougher scorer than, than, than me except Sam <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was I thought I was tough but I got to keep the people, the people yeah, interested you here. You got to go with what you think. I, I mean, I was between a 9.5 and a 10, but when I'm thinking about it, how many song, how many albums do I like better than this? And in my mind, not many. So I'm going to give it a 10. Uh, I don't want to, because we're going to come upon albums that are higher regarded than this, that I'm not going to give a 10 to. No. We're going to go, well, you gave Moondance a 10. Well, that's how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that if I if Sam was a teacher, I would never get a hundred on any essay that I wrote. But I I like that about I like the the fact that you got to earn a ten. <laughs> well, I, I used to have, I had a professor in um, college. He taught New Testament, and um, he only graded what you got correct. He didn't he didn't grade what you got inaccurate. Is that right? So that was kind of interesting how he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So he, he he started everybody essentially with a um a zero and worked their way up with um whatever accurate descriptions they put in their essays, especially essays because it was mostly an essay class. But um, yeah. yeah, but anyway, it's a great album. I love it. I, I I was happy to listen to it again today. Yeah, me too. I so what are your what are your tens? Have you already done those already? He's, he's Stay tuned, them. Randy. Stay tuned. We haven't, we haven't done a ten yet, as far as. So you haven't Sam hasn't given a 10 yet. Huh? Now, I gave Dark Side of the Moon a 10, and I gave this a 10, and I gave uh, Band on the Run, I think, a 9. and I gave Band on the Run an 8, I think. And uh, Highway 61 revisited a 9.5. So this beats Highway 61 for me. <laughs> wow. I mean, it, it just does. I mean... And, it's and, more accessible than Highway 61. It is. And as far as strength of consistency all the way through, this has it for me. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the individual score. And we, we invite people out there to give us their scores, give us comments, like, subscribe to all the channels here. Randall Nelson, check his channel out. Great yeah. collection, fantastic knowledge of music. I'm always impressed every time I watch his channel. Same with Sam, fantastic. Going to a concert tonight. He's out and about, sees more concerts in uh, what a week than I see in uh, the last 20 years. But anyway. And, uh... Let me uh, let me give a plug here really quick on uh, I just confirmed today is Saturday Saturday morning it'll be um, seven a.m. Pacific time um, was that ten a.m. 
um, Eastern time, I will be interviewed with uh, Rachel, the music ma'am, on her oh, channel. Cool. So, um, so I'll be watching. up on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be there on Saturday morning. So we just confirmed that today. I love it. 10 o'clock Eastern yeah. on Saturday. Yep. Yeah, you might, you on might, her, on uh, her channel. You might prompt me into going for an interview. I've been laying back. She asked me several times and I kept avoiding it. But mm -hmm. uh, Larry's doing it today. You're doing it Saturday. So maybe I'll yeah. pull up on it. Anyway, we want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, this is our fourth installment of the series. Next week, we're going to be back with the band and the uh, Brown album with uh, JT from JT's Record Room. Stay tuned for that. So for Randy and Sam, this is Rich. We'll see you. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.